We're back! <laughs> Happy June 1st, my friend. It, it, interesting discussion before the show it's started. Always, it's always good we have a little discussion before the show, usually about a half hour before the show. We always have a good discussion, right? Y'all should wish that you were a fly on the wall here. Amen to that. Wow. It was, uh... It was different. <laughs> to say the least. Right? It was different. That's it was. It, it yeah. was. But it was all good. Put it this way. We're going to save it for our last show that we ever do. We because do. once we get to that point, it's all over. <laughs> right? You're right, Mark Coleman. Let's do this. Oh. Can't wait to see you in, in, a, in a couple of days, Mark. That's right. You can you can in, entertain Mike and I around <laughs> and, and get to know us. Bob Brown, Tom Gensel, and Mark are in the cabin. Tom tonight. Gensel. Excellent, excellent. That's right, the, the Elk Slayer. All right. So there you go. And let me get a quick share out of the way, and we'll get going tonight. Hopefully we can keep this one on the rails tonight, man. I just, I am fired up. I, I totally agree. There's about 15 things right now that I'm fired up about. <laughs> right. I'm just aggravated. And then you're drinking cold brew on top of that. I had a nitro brew at deer camp today. Yeah? Woo! Okay. That's some good stuff. Not going to lie. Uh, is he going to have that show? I don't know. I'd like to know. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, try it out. All right. You ready to kick this thing off? Let's do it. <laughs> you can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. You know, it's funny you mention that, Mark, because that's just about the line that we were going down. Right, right. It was, uh, it was pretty heated here for a minute. It was. All right. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Welcome back. Another week of Up North Journal podcast live here on Facebook for those watching and for those on the podcast listening. You got to go watch Facebook or catch us on YouTube. You I should, tell you what. You should be on Facebook. Because you only hear the edited version on the podcast, the unedited version on Facebook and YouTube. So, but it is June 1st. Yeah, we've made it. A little bit cooler than the last three days. It is. Which is nice. a good thing. It is. I like the break. Yep. But... We're here. It's June first. That means we got some business uh, we're going to be doing in the next couple weeks. Mm -hmm. But we got some business to take care of with our supporters. Well, let's get to it. Absolutely. I tell you what, folks. I was down at Deer Camp today, which is the home of Buck Bates, and they've got some new, exciting stuff out. You know, some more hunting stuff on the wall in the shop. Uh, go over to BuckBates.com, and if you use the promo code UNJ20, you'll get twenty percent off your order when you check out. There you go. The Packer Max. Mm -hmm. No time like the present to get in your food plots or any time during the year. But uh, if you want to save $25, use the code UNJ25. Go over to PackerMax.com. Talk to Lincoln Roan. Get a Packer Max. There you go. Uh, again, down at Deer Camp, JPO Game Calls. He had them there. And if you're thinking about getting yourself a game call, whether it's for deer hunting or coyotes or squirrels or checking out the Omni Series, Use the promo code UNJ10. You'll get 10% off your order at WJPO Game Calls. The Island Armory. Get them before they take them is what his, her motto was. Uh, and if you use the promo code UNJ10 at theislandarmory.com, you'll get 10% off your order. And I recommend going to the website and checking because she's always adding what in stock items they have right on the front page weren't we just talking about this before the show we were i'll give you a little insight what we we're talking about right and i tell you what we have switched over to our cold brew that's right which is delicious today right delicious yes. delicious it is deli delicious right? here it is cold brew we're, we're having some now you use the promo code unj10 over at deer camp coffee you will get 10 percent off your order there while you're there get some of ours right i tell you what don't forget to get over get the unj medium roast to help us because we help them and if you're up in the up which is a new bear which is a nice 59 degrees and sunny i don't see a cloud in the sky there uh, get over to cedars get a pizza they're selling deer camp coffee right there in the store in the restaurant itself very nice. Absolutely. There you go. A big shout out to FM 123 up there in Newberry that carries the show for us. All right. So uh, if you come back to me, I want to give a shout out. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Nope. Uh, while at Deer Camp today, 
uh, Tony introduced me to a couple that is working with, it's called Crossroads for Youth, who help out the youth up in the area of Oxford. Okay. That's where the camp's at. And guess what they're going to have? Crossroads for Youth is going to have Cow Plop Bingo. That's right, folks. Cow Plop Bingo. Okay, so how does one play Cow Plop Bingo, Dan? So, you got a field, you mark it off like a bingo board. It's for each person that's playing. You got your own little board. You got you got your own little board, but then they got the field. Okay. Right? And they got it sectioned off however they do it. Okay. And basically, as the cow plops, you that's, you play bingo. So, okay. it's free admission for all ages. They're going to have potato sack races, egg toss, bounce house, face painting. Kona Ice Truck is going to be there and more. So, get over to Oxford. Uh, June 18th is from 1 to 3. And check them out on Facebook. Go over there. Uh, see what they got going on. And uh, help some kids in the area. Absolutely. But, that's not all. want to give a shout out to Mr. Mark Coleman. Uh, and uh, over at Raised at Full Draw. He's in his last week here. He's trying to get some kids to camp, so he's put out a little uh, a little blurb out there. To uh, he's running it till this Friday, and if you donate a hundred bucks, he'll cover the other hundred and fifty, so it comes to a total of two fifty, and he'll help kids get to camp. And you can do your part by helping out with just a hundred bucks. He'll take care of the rest. There you go. Right. So. And one of those camps is here in Michigan. Absolutely. Over on the west side of the state. Teaches them about the outdoors and hunting and all that kind of good stuff. So so what's on the agenda for tonight? So we're going to talk about our up north experience. Actually, you went west in Michigan, and I went to the UP. Yep. So You went north, then west. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Way so west. <laughs> you want to start with me, if you know, if you want to. I can talk about what we did. Makes no never mind to me. What was your agenda going up north? Okay, what, what, so what did you want to get? All going? right, so we're heading up to the cabin first time of the year. So you haven't been up since we were deer hunting last year. Well, uh, or you went deer hunting. I last went. Year. I haven't been up there since no middle of November. Is there still snow on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I bet you if it would have been right, they probably lost it. A. It's actually kind of been a wet. Okay. Uh, as we were driving up. Uh, it was raining. Literally, when we were crossing the Mackinac Bridge, we could not see 200 feet in front of us until we got to the big pillars. And oh, here they are. Okay. And then it kind of felt really weird when you're driving towards into St. Ignace, and it's like, okay, you can't see land, you can't see nothing. Oh, there it is. It, and there it is. So, um, but our agenda was to go up north. Uh, we were going to put a stand out in the woods, and then we were going to do some turkey hunting. Oh, that's right. You're going to do some turkey hunting. Absolutely. And uh, Why are we not having turkey burger sandwiches right now? Well, I'll get to that story. Okay. <laughs> there isn't much of a story to it. <laughs> okay. But as you see here in my pictures, uh, getting there into St. Ignace, it was wet. It was dreary. But you know what? It was nice to get into the UP. It was one of those things that uh, we were going to spend three, four days up there doing stuff around the cabin, uh, making sure everything worked, mm -hmm. and then try to get some turkey hunting in. Just so you know, the birds weren't talking. So we got up there, and uh, finally, seven hours into our drive, we were driving into Crystal Falls, Michigan. Oh, and, uh, I jumped back to us there. Sorry. Right? And we were driving into town. By the time we got that far west, west it finally, the weather broke. And it wasn't as rainy. And as we were driving there, we just saw a ton of water in the woods. Wherever we could get a peek into the woods, it, was, it looked like there was water. That's pretty high ground up there. Yeah, you got some highs and lows, and man, it was just, the, the everything was high. I mean, all the rivers were high, and hmm. you know, the, the creek going into the cabin, that was really high. Yeah, and, when did they lose their last snow up there? Do you know? I, I, I don't know the exact date, but it was probably just into May. It's okay. typically when... If the weather plays nice, it's gone. But, uh, you know, it was just one of those things that um, going up there is like 
and you know when you're up there and you know this being out in the woods when you see a lot of water you're like uh oh yeah could be a mosquito season right or anything else season right so we did get up there in time to get out the first night do a little turkey hunting as you see i was ready i was support i was uh supporting the shield while i was out uh and i tell you what it was wow. really green no kidding and um we were just uh this is uh this is where you shot in the area of your deer okay it's out of that stand yep okay and it was just we we're on a hunch we, the birds weren't talking mm -hmm. we tried calling nothing so we just picked two corners of the 40 and say you're gonna go over there i'm gonna go over here and we're gonna sit for a few hours and see what happens yes and nothing happened only thing uh we called uh actually my cousin brian who was calling and i was calling back at him we we're kind of in a fight um a, a couple of does came in curious he had decoys out i didn't uh so but as you can tell it was definitely greening up all over the place which was kind of nice to see so the first night we got out but there was nothing there to see man that is green i can't get over how green that is i know this picture is I, this is an unedited photo <laughs> it, yeah it looks like it's been brightened up i know right that is straight off the phone so wow. it's like wow so but the bugs weren't bad really which, which made it nice i didn't have to use my thermosel i obviously i sprayed down for for ticks and mosquitoes but other than that it wasn't too bad so ticks everybody's been talking about ticks this year how bad they are like every year right exactly so believe it or not we went and we put a stand out in the woods so we were out uh easy cutting in the brush and walking through the woods and we had or i had brian had zero i had one tick that literally i was in the side by side i had my phone down on the seat and i picked up my phone to look at it and it was walking across the screen and that was the only tick of the weekend. He was checking his email. I think he was. And, I, it, and then, of course, at that point, you start feeling really weird. Yeah, you start itching all over. Well, that, and he's like, well, if I were to put that up to my ear. Yeah, it'd been in your ear. And oh, that. yeah, right? That would have been that would have been not cool. So I tell you what, it was nice to get out there. But how do you else you start your day? Is you start your day with deer camp coffee. Mm-hmm. You know, we are getting ready to do some work in the woods that next morning and it's like all right get the deer camp going get it brewing get ready to do some construction out in the woods so our agenda was we called in the morning didn't get nothing so let's, let's get it to our work see what we're going to do get this thing out in the woods um, as you can see here we are in full construction mode of building a platform um, this was going to be our toughest stand to put up it was the furthest in and we we're trying to figure out a way to get all the wood back there at one time so you built another one yes why did what happened to the, the the deer gutting table why didn't you put that stand up that's the one that went up oh that's it right there yep we we finished it well it looks clean funny you say that i should have took a picture of it because there was blood all over that thing there was it was all gone wow there was it was it was first of all they must have had a really good windstorm up there because the stand itself was it it, it fell because we only kind of temporarily screwed it mm -hmm. and it fell uh the feeder over that we made was blown over there was things that were just a few trees were down okay. so they probably had a good windstorm so we um set out we finished it up uh, then we obviously disassembled for transportating it out into the, the field. Transportating it. Yep. <laughs> so okay. it was like, how are we going to get this thing back there? Because it's heavy. So we were trying to figure out a way, and it just, uh, yeah, it just, sometimes you overthink it. And we tried, and I'm like, nope, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to take out the necessary boards to put the base, and... Uh, we got out there, we used the easy cuts to cut into the woods here, clear out a little area, and we started building the base. And from there, we uh, just started working. It was really nice. It was one of those things that we put it together. Uh, you know, as we put it together at the cabin, we numbered it when we disassembled it. 
So it was basically just one big puzzle, putting it all together. Okay. And so we, we started working on it. And getting it was a couple of trips to get all the wood back there. But every time we needed to run back to the cabin, we threw some more wood in. And we brought it out with us. So it was real, real simple. And you can see here that, you know, the weather wasn't bad. This was on Friday. Did you clear that area out prior to this? Or, or did you do it when you got up there? We, we did not clear it out prior. We did it. Wow. When we got that's there. a lot of work yeah it was and as you can see on one of the trips we needed a la we made a ladder so we took the ladder out there so and that's exactly how I took it out there strapped it down to the side by side and away we went good lord right and I didn't take a picture of it because we're it's just one of those things you don't think about it but we used the side by side to hoist we put in we lifted up one side we put the four by four is in one end. Mm -hmm. We went to the opposite side. We put a, a buckle, a pulley up in the tree. The side by side is sitting to the left right now. And we did a rope and I used the um, power winch. Pulled it up and pulled used it the right legs up. as a lever to pull and it we up. just shoved the legs on the other side, brought it back down, and we went from there. Nice. Yeah. So it was really cool. Uh, obviously, we just did some work out there. And um, no work being done there. Well, this was after the first night, and uh, my, my, my other cousins were up there, and they were coming down for a bonfire. So I just happened to be taking some pictures, and they were coming in from the other camp. So it's always good to have family around and uh, coming down for a, a bonfire, right? There's, there, there it was that evening. This was Friday evening. Uh, and it was uh, not rain, man. Look at that sky. It was, it was awesome. We we sat up till one thirty in the morning, just looking at the stars, seeing meteors. Yeah, did you see any aurora borealis? We did not see that. We uh, saw, like I said, we we were watching meteors. We saw probably a half a dozen, mm. you know. <laughs> and I guess the next night or the night, no, I'm sorry, Monday night was gonna be almost a thousand. Per hour. Per hour. Yeah. So I haven't heard if my, my cousin got back up there. And so that's what we did. We sat around the campfire on Friday night just talking about old times and had good times that we are. It was it was good. It was uh, one of those things that we just, you know, it was good just to sit back and hear nothing. Well, that's that's the way it is when we're on the river when we go kayaking. I just I love just dead silence other than just whatever's in nature at the time. It's uh uh, going back again to what we were talking about before the show started, the way things are right now, it's just the basics of being simple, uh, getting out in nature, uh, clearing your head, just decompressing and getting away from everything. I tell you what, you are absolutely correct. And Mark Cohen, I bet you you're right. I bet you there were shrooms up there, especially uh, getting into... Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, when it was getting pretty roasty. It was supposed to be pretty mm -hmm. hot up there on Monday. And uh, yeah, you're right, Mike. Some, some, sometimes you get the bird, and sometimes they give you the bird. <laughs> hey, Adam Wynn's in the cabin tonight. He's right. checking in with us. Uh, that stand is 10 feet high. Ten feet. Actually, let me think about that. The posts are 10 feet, and there's probably another... Six, eight inches on, on top. top of that, right? Yeah. Because of the... Um, so all in all, had a good time? Oh, absolutely. Refreshing? Got it, some work done? It, it, it was awesome. And uh, here's a photo of what we used to clear that area. You asked about it. There it is. We had the pack, easy pack, and uh, we were just working around that area and just using it to, to cut it all up. The old sling pack. Exactly. So we used the sling pack there uh, to do some cutting. And finally, when we were able to get up on the deck, this is the new view that we have. Uh, what patch of wood is that in? So that is, um, it's on, you know the side Gabby was on? Yep. It's in the northeast corner of the property. Uh, and this is, if you were to look to your right, you'd look right at my cousin's property. Okay. And if you look towards these woods here, that is the adjacent property behind us. Gotcha. Okay. So, it's a really good corridor that these deer run along these wood lines. 
and that's kind of looking out the other way. But you can see it was greening up. It almost kind of looks like a fall, but it was it, it was greening up. Obviously, the bigger trees were still coming out. So, yeah, so it was all good. There we were, happy. Happy we got it up in the, in the sky. So, you know, and while we were there, I had some buck baits, and we started a mineral lick. Uh, we found a stump. There's plenty of them there. And I threw some, down some buck baits, and uh, we'll see what happens. You got a camera on it? I don't have a camera on it yet. I will. I was Actually, when I put this down, I spotted a tree that I wanted to put uh, some uh, camera there. I'll probably put it up. If I go up in July, I'll probably re-put some more minerals down and, and put a uh, uh, that, camera there. That looks suspicious right there. So... He's using the easy cuts. Oh, okay. He's off in the woods using the easy cuts. I thought, you, you thought maybe he was... Uh, I didn't know what he was doing at first. Uh, like, maybe what? he was uh, getting ready to no, take his morning constitution there. No, no, no. He was clearing out some shooting lanes that he, he identified. And there is the finished product. What are you going to put on top? Pop-up line? So, for now, we're going to put pop-up lines on it. It's just as easy to pop them up there. Okay. Roller, and uh, take care of it. All right. So that was pretty much it for getting the stand completed. Now, all day Saturday, this was Saturday, it, it rained. It was a, one of those misty, mm -hmm. rainy things going on, and um, which actually was nice. It was cool. We got wet, and there was no bugs. So I'll take the trade off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and Mark yeah. Coleman asked what direction the wind blew primarily down here. It's it's a southwest wind up there. Yes, <laughs> right. So All so over. you know you asked that question and I and I can give you. A, so if you're looking this way, it's going in the photo. The wind typically goes left to right. So it's basically out of the west, and we're basically looking north at this point. So it's just going to cut across. So your hunting season winds, uh, prevailing winds are out of the west. Yep. Not out of the north. Nope. That's odd. I would have thought they would have come out of the north. And then if you get a warm front, it'll come out of the south, which... Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it, it's one of those things. Or if it comes out of the north, it's blowing right in your face. Yeah. So it's blowing both directions, either out of the west or out of the north. It's perfect. Any so, poison ivy in that area? Probably not because they, there's too much snow. <laughs> and so, right, you know, you, you're always looking out for it. Um, and you, I'm, you know what, Mr. Coleman? We could probably go look for some and find some, but I ain't doing it. So that was our, our building project. We got okay. it done. Then we decided we're going to do some more turkey hunting. Yeah, same thing. We were going to run and gun. And it was it was fun because we went a few miles up the road and we just started poking out trails and, and, and working our way back. We didn't hear any birds. Didn't hear one. It was kind of scary. It was really quiet. Huh. And some of the spots, we were by rivers. Uh, we were some, you know, it's like, hey, let's go check out some spots. So that's what we did, and this one here is by the river. This is actually a really good deer hunting spot uh, that we have. Uh, one of our cousins kind of, this is his area. So we went over there, and we would do some calling, and, and it was totally silent. Hmm. I don't know if it was the weather, being so wet. Yeah, I don't know. You know, now, tune back in the fall. They were, they, they were everywhere. <laughs> right? Yeah, we so, saw birds all over. I can't tell you what we were doing, you know, it, it, what they're doing. So, we, were, yeah, we were just out cruising. Um, obviously, we were calling, and but nothing. That tree there has got to be at least 12 feet around. It's huge. It is just humongous. It's just one of those things like, wow. Two people can't reach around it, huh? Nope. It was huge. Interesting. And then, obviously, on our way home, we came home Sunday, and it was just beautiful. Of course, when you leave it, the weather always changes and gets better when you're heading home. Right. So never fails. That was our weekend trip up to the cabin. Opened up the cabin. Knock on wood. Everything in the cabin, water came up. Electric electricity was good. No issues. That's good. Yes. That's a good was. start to the season. Absolutely. So that's all set, ready to go. And then, uh, like I said, obviously. Uh, the turkey season was a bust, but at least we're out there. We, we, we probably covered 
10 miles okay from the start to the finish you know we go we went up to a spot we found a lake mm -hmm. then we worked our way back to another trail from another trail we'd walk it call and it just nothing happened you know see sometimes that's just the way it is it is no it, rhyme or reason for it, it, it so. in, in the morning we got up we sat on the porch we listened we'd call nothing we're almost halfway through the show all right <laughs> we need I to like take it. a break so uh, we're going to step outside, take care of some quick business. We'll be right back after this. That's right, folks. All righty. And we'll get on with the rest of it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Go to my page there, in my personal page. Yep, okay. Uh, let me do that. Oh, I saved this off here. Yeah, hopefully everybody had a good uh, Memorial Day, you know, was safe and everybody came back uh, well rested and ready to go for the week I know we hit it hard uh, the last two days it's the Deerlicious Porter Brew that's what we're drinking there you go that's what it is right all right yeah keep keep going like, yeah go you're, back you're, to the beginning you're, you're gonna be down here right yep keep going uh, keep going. Keep going. There's your puzzle. Yep. Uh, there we go. Right here. Um, yeah, we can start with those photos. All right, let's start right there. Yep. You can just kind of cruise through them. Yep. All right, here we go. Stand by. Two, three, two, and one. All right, second segment of the show. Halfway through the show. That all right? Just a reminder, everybody out there, this weekend, June 4th, at the New Baltimore Trade Center. That's right, folks. We have an outdoor show. Saturday from 10 to 8, June 4th, at the New Baltimore Trade Center. Up North Journal is going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. And we're going to be supporting uh, Deer Camp, Buck Baits, and Island Armory. Uh, you and I are going to be there. Tammy's going to be there. Mark Holman's going to be Adam there. Rinkinger. And our newest... Uh, Member of the crew, Adam Wynn, is going to be there. Absolutely. So if uh, if you're out and about, stop in in New Baltimore, check it out. Uh, I know there's going to be a couple other vendors there as well. So Good deal. Absolutely. That's all good. So you left on Thursday of last week, too. Yes, I did. Yep, we made it up to uh, Pentwater, just south of Ludington onto Lake Michigan, and uh, had a pretty good drive up there. You can blow it up full screen if you want. Probably be a little easier. Yeah, it didn't do much there. But well, uh, it sure looks like you started off the weekend right with eating. Well, I always eat good when I'm at camp or camping or what have you. But yeah, we were at state park. Uh, you know, do we do most of our meals over the fire? But uh, I, I, I want to say something because I'm going to jump on a soapbox here real quick. When you're out camping in a campground, state campground, whatever, don't be that guy or gal who leaves your garbage all over the place to blow through everybody's stinking campsite all weekend isn't, long. Isn't it like the kind of one rule is leave it how you found it or leave only better foot, leave only footprints? Dude, there was these people were partying up a storm. They didn't really that didn't bother me. I mean, they do whatever they want. I had the AC cranked up in the camper, so we didn't hear them. I slept just fine. But every stinking morning, you got up, and there was litter all over my campsite from them. Because it was blowing in. Yeah, blowing in. You know, Because we're up on the Great Lakes. Uh, here's a good indication of how hard the wind's blowing, because you see the white caps. That's on the beach right there. And the wind blew all weekend, which that's fine. But, you know, tie your stuff down. There, there was 30 to 40 pop and beer cans in our site every morning, garbage blowing through. Clothes blowing through because they had a bunch of little kids and it was you know they take off their stuff. It was, it was just like a big garbage dump. So don't be that guy. Right, okay. I get it. Don't be uh, those people. Don't be those. You know, it, it, I get it. You're there to have a good time, but be yeah. a little bit respectful of the other campers around you. Because Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nothing worse than having a neighbor like that. Yep. You know, I know you're going to go to the next spot and you'll probably have one of the, the best neighbors for the summer. We've never had a problem like that, but th this weekend was bad. Right, uh, and then the guy two campsites down decided he was going to see who could have the biggest bonfire. Right, cool. Yeah, that was that was a, a treat as well. But yeah, this I think this is probably one of my favorite pictures from the whole trip right here. This is looking 
north up the coast uh, towards Ludington. Uh, that just the view is incredible. Uh, but yeah, it was windy. We had white caps, you know. And when it's like that, you're getting three, four footers, maybe even a five footer. I mean, it's it's blowing pretty good. So nice. But uh, yeah, we had some good meals. We eat pretty good. And uh, you know, it's funny. This is you know, you were just talking about it. This picture here, white caps. Yep. This is the next morning. This the next morning. Yep. We actually, meant, no, that was in the evening. I take that back. It died down, uh, and we were kicking ourselves because we didn't actually throw the boats in the in the big water and go up the, ch the channel here to uh, to go into the the river coming out. Oh, okay. You know, that was the goal. The the weekend it was to hit the, uh, Lake Pentwater and then go up in the Pentwater River. And we also want to do the PR Marquette, but uh, yeah, this it, it calmed right down. It was a great evening, and we wish we'd have been out there. So shoulda, woulda, and coulda, right? Yeah, yeah. So oh, there's a the happy couple. Yeah, there we Got are. Got a photo in, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's what it's all about. Make sure you get the good photos in, right? And then you got the campsite. Yeah. Got the American flag. This is the first tra time with the the new kayak hauling trailer, which did how, great. How, I was gonna say, how did it do? Uh, we love it. It just it, they ride so much better. We got V racks on it instead of J hooks, and uh, for people at kayak, know what that is. And you don't have to worry about them on top of a car. Nope. You just you know, and it's easier to load. Yep. Yeah, it was a piece of cake. Right. So. Exactly. And I've seen I've seen a couple people. Uh, matter of fact, when I was coming home, adjusting their stuff on the side of the road. Yep. Hats off to them for stopping and checking. Right. You know, but yeah, our stuff was tied down really good, so no issues there at all. So you can go to the next set of photos there that we got. But, uh, yeah, the first two days really didn't do much. I mean, I've, I've been working so much overtime lately. I just I had to decompress, kind of get in the zone. I slept a lot the first two days just to kind of get back into it. And, uh, and then we went out and we hit uh, the Pierre Marquette River, which is, yeah, right there. So, you know, you can just kind of cruise through those photos right there. There we go. All right. But Look. the PM, you know, that's, that's a big fishing river. Uh, we went way downstream, stayed out of the, what they call, you know, the per, the pristine premier holy waters where everybody fishes. Oh, okay. And actually, um, that stretch above where we were at, you have to have a permit to be in the river with a kayak. You really? Have, you have to pre-register with the DNR with the date you're going to be there. And they only, I guess they only allow so many people. I guess I understand, too, because, you know, the steelhead run up this lake trout, uh, you know, and then, and then there's trout in the stream as well. It's just it. there's so much going on up in the, those upper stretches where everything's really pristine. They just don't want a bunch of partiers coming down. and Right. Well, like a, like a, like a know, tie off or a raft yep, off or whatever. Yep. Just a flotilla. Right. Uh, like they kind of happens on the Asabo and rifle. Yep. Yeah, you get the big groups just parting yeah. it up and hooping and island. It looks like they kind of control what goes on there. Yeah, you can just kind of go through them. But uh, looks like the dog was having a good time. Yeah, he had a good time. He was chilling. Oh! So Memorial Day, what better way to celebrate Memorial Day than to see a bald eagle? Right, exactly. Actually, you can cut through. There's actually a video there at some point where we're floating through. But uh, he never spooked. He kind of hung out there and let us get pretty close. I guess I didn't post the video there. Hmm. Maybe, I don't know. I thought I did post a video there. But anyway, yeah, he let us cruise right underneath him, and he never spooked or anything. It was really nice. So nice. He kind of hung out there. Looks like he had some obstacles that had to go around. Yeah, there was some trash in the river. Well, I, I don't mean like actual trash trash, but I mean no, there but was some stuff that we had to get around. There was a couple spots that it wasn't hairy or nothing. It's just if, if you're a newbie, you, you need to take some precaution. Well, you should always take some precautions, and you know, like you said, uh, you always want to come back that that day or that evening, mm -hmm. whenever you're out there. Uh, it looks like you're getting the. That's when we're first getting in. Actually, I gotta say, hats off to the DNR. Uh, their boat launches up there, there where the people put in. They got some really, really nice boat launches up there. Okay. They've been really well taken care of and maintained. Uh, great facilities. Can't say enough for them. Well, that's where our, our monies go to, right? Yep. Help absolutely. that out. And so. then, you know, you're cruising down here. How was the water levels? Duh, they went real high. Really? Yeah, it was probably three, four foot deep in most places. Okay. Current was kind of slow. 
nice leisurely little pad. Didn't really paddle. Did more, more steering than anything. I mean, it was just, it was a good float. We went five miles, took us two and a half hours, so it was nice. All right. Not bad at all. And like you said, look at you got blue skies and everything. You know, perfect day. It, Temperature it was perfect. You know, we're in full wetsuits, uh, making sure that in case we did take a dip, that you know you're protected because the water's still cold. Oh yeah, it's it's not. So. So that's cool. I I thought I, for sure I had a bald eagle video in there somewhere. So, but no, it was a good float. Um, and, and when we got out. That we really put time in and made sure we knew where we wanted to go. Okay, our put in our takeout spot, and you know checking. Uh, we actually went out and we drove and made sure of where we we're going to put in and where we we're taking out. So we had everything all pre-planned before the day before we even went. And the reason I say that is, if you're a newbie and you're getting out and you're going to hit a river, you've got to pay attention where you're putting in and where you're taking out. It, it is imperable. Because where we took out was the last takeout spot until you got into Ludington, which was a 10-hour float. Oh, beyond don't that. miss that. And as we're, we took out, we're getting our gear all together, and this gentleman and his wife and boy come down from the parking lot. They got the kayaks, and they're getting ready to get in the river. And I look at Nancy, and she says, what? I go, they're putting in. And she goes, yeah. I go, it's 10 hours to the next spot. That's like 18 miles, 18, 20 miles to the next takeout. It's through, <laughs> wild, you know, basically wilderness. Right. And I'm like, I bet they don't. You, you can tell because it, here we are. We got full wetsuits on, all of our gear. You know, they had T-shirt, tank top, shorts. They were going to do flip-flops. Fun, fun paddle. Yep. And life jacket. You know, they were not prepared at all. Right. Exactly. And I said, hey, sir, excuse me. I don't mean to butt in, but are y'all putting in? Yeah, yeah. I said, where are you taking out at? Oh, we're just going to go downstream a little bit maybe. And, you know, we, we may paddle back up. And I'm like, well, you're not going to paddle back. The current was enough to make it float. But it was fast enough. You're not going to be paddling back upstream. It'll be a tough, tough, it, it, tough paddle. To we back we actually back paddled. Because there was a woodpecker on a stump. We wanted to get a picture. So I'm back paddling, back paddling. Could not. So I flipped it around, started paddling up the current. And it wore me out. Right. Going back 50 to 100 yards so I could float back past again. Now, man, I'm like, doing that for a mile. You know? <laughs> well, and, and they said, well, we're just going downstream, you know, two or three miles. We don't find a place to take out. Then, you know, we'll, we'll paddle back. I'm like, no, you won't. <laughs> I said, do you know where the next stop is? No. I said, <laughs> it's about. 18 to 20 miles downstream and his jaw like went <laughs> he, he didn't kind of look at the map did he no and the lady said yeah we were just gonna you know hopefully call our friends you know because there's a campground right across from where we took out oh okay you know and he said we're gonna call our friends they're gonna come get us i go i said i'm telling you i said it's a long long way <laughs> just warning you right and they didn't have any didn't have any food with them you know no drinks no, no drink. water nothing they thought it was going to be an easy yeah. hour or two out on the water, right? And I said, we're going back to get our vehicle where we just put in at. And I said, it's about a two-and-a-half-hour float. And I said, you come right back to here. And they're like, well, would you take us up to that spot? You know, can we follow you? I'm like, yeah, you can follow us up there. So they followed you? And yep. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's good. Very, very well done. How many, Looking out for the safety. Look, how, how, many, how many stories do you hear about people getting stranded on a river right? overnight and people not know where they're at and then they get eat up by bugs? They get eat up by bugs, they lose their shoes, yeah. they get tipped over, they get cold, hypothermia, yeah. mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And next thing you know, you got the, yep. you know, out looking for them, right? Yep. So, so make doggone sure you know. Hey, Mark Coleman, do you, do you get much cell phone reception out there? Um, depends on where you're at on the property. Uh, on the high side, you'll get a lot better than you do in the swamp. Adam Wynn got out on the kayak. He caught some bass. Yeah, he did. I got to get him on the river. Right. Uh, Mark Coleman asked, what kind of footwear do we wear? If I'm not wearing water shoes in, like, the middle of the summer when I'm taking a short trip in a real shallow river, I wear uh, my neoprene boots, and they're knee-high. And I don't mean hunting boots. These are, like, really thick. Thin, like three mil thin, and they're soft soled, and it's for kayak. Their kayak are made by NRS, 
and they are great because they're waterproof. Um, even though they are neoprene, but they are waterproof. And we use that, or I use those, and Nancy uses those in the cold weather. So it keeps your feet warm, keeps you dry. So that's well, that's, that's the most important thing is you don't want to get wet because then things can go a little bit awry, and then, yep. yeah, that's not going to go well. Yeah. So so basically that was, uh, you know, I really enjoyed the, the PM. It was a nice float. Like I said, saw a lot, of, not a lot of, we saw one deer, saw a turtle, the first turtle of the year. So it's just now getting warm enough for them to come out and sun themselves. Yeah. I saved a turtle. Did you? Good for you. I was crossing the road, and I stopped in the middle of the road and yeah. kept it going the way it was going. So that was all the woodpecker. You know why a woodpecker does not get a concussion from wrapping on a tree? Why? Their brain is protected by their tongue. Their tongue wraps up around the backside of their brain and holds it keeps it from banging against the front of their skull. No way. Look it up. I didn't believe it either. Nancy told me that and I looked it up and... Sure enough? Yep. So like those big for any size woodpecker, that's how it works. Well, that's what it said. Holy smokes. I don't hey, know every, uh, every one, but... Right? Big shout out to JPO Game Calls. They're in the house and he made it. Well, way to go. Hopefully things are going good for y'all. I just wonder. That just has me perplexed. Be able to wrap your brain around your, or wrap your tongue around your brain. You know another interesting fact about birds? Let me hear it. We'll go two for two. Birds have no sphincter. <laughs> That's why when they're flying, they're bombing. <laughs> True. And one of the worst ones are cranes. They are the nastiest when they're. Uh, so there's some news you can use, folks. Right there. All right. Oh my gosh. I'd use that line right now there, Mr. Mark Coleman. Good man, Mike. Well done. Yeah. Good information. It is good information. Right? So, you know, like you said, it was nice to get out in the woods. It was nice to get out and just, like you said, decompress, sitting by the fire, not a care in the world, listening to nothing. Yep. In, in your case, you were probably listening to the waves hit the water. Yeah, well, on the river, first thing I did, and I do this every single time I get in the water, Nancy can testify to this. When we're on the water and there's nobody around, we push off, we get going, I take the paddle and I hang it back on my shoulders like this and I just lean back and I'm like, hey. And she goes, what? And I go, hey, hear that? You hear that? She's like, nope, and I love it. So Exactly. And you're right, Mark Coleman. Mike is in the know. Dropping knowledge on the, wood, the woodpeckers. There you go. Uh, yep, right, Adam Wynn, learning something new every day. That's right. So... You know, it's just, like I said, it was so nice. The bugs were not that bad. Yeah, we had some, but we sprayed. You know, yeah. they might have been buzzing. The, the black flies were probably buzzing us. The mosquitoes were there. But once we sprayed down, we sprayed with permethrin, keep the ticks off. Uh, and then we did the off for around the head and hats. and Keep them critters off. Ugh. There you go. But everybody's saying how bad they are, and I get it. It was... It was as much wetness as I saw in the woods, yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay. You know, and, and Mark Coleman, truthfully, I really didn't look for any morels, which I probably would have been a good time, but... I didn't see any. We kind of glanced while we were out and about. We were really in a position to go deep looking for them, so... Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I'll bring... Mark, yes, I'll answer that question here. We're going to take a break, and I'll answer that question for you when we come back. We're going to step outside. We'll be right back after this. All right, folks. Cause that's Third segment of the show. Because that happened. Oh, yes. Nice. That's when you hop in the side by side and go back to the cabin. No, there's no side by side. Right. I get it. All right. Stand by. Three, two, and one. All right. So there's a question right before there we went to break. A, there is a question. Do you ever have to go potty while on the water? Constantly. Especially when I'm drinking... Well, when you're drinking Deer coffee. Camp coffee. Because yeah. I actually... Uh, those pictures weren't on there. there was, I had a picture. Oh, no. I didn't post that one. I got a picture of my, my Deer Camp uh, coffee mug sitting in my... I've got a console. And it's got two cup holders in it and a dry box in the console. Um... So, yeah, I'm constantly having to go to the bathroom. What I do, 
paddle over to the shore real quick, find a nice sandy spot, and that's the reason I wear a two-piece uh, wetsuit. That way it's easy, you know, you don't have to worry about taking the whole top part down and taking care of business. So, uh, but number two, no, no. I, I make sure and pre-plan all of that in the morning before the trip to make sure that doesn't become an issue. So, <laughs> that has not happened. But on our last trip, uh, actually, let's see, that's that's the end of that run of pictures there. You can go back, uh, the first water picture. Keep going, right there. Oh. Or no, go back to the actually the set of pictures before that, and then, then I'll have you start there at that point because it'll explain kind of what was going on at that point. No, I'm talking about there's a whole, another set of pictures. Oh, 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 oh gotcha, 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 gotcha. Got to direct this guy. I well, tell you. I could pull up your puzzle. Scroll down. That was that was later on. That was in the evening. It's down below that one. Yeah. It's the it's the morning shots. Sorry, folks. Here I gotta direct. Him. Well, I, I gotta wait for the computer to load too. Keep going. Right there. There you go. All right. So our last full morning, which would have been Sunday morning, this was us at the beach getting ready to launch into Lake Michigan, right into the lake. Right into the mouth of the lion, so to speak. Okay, go to the next one. A couple, you can flip to them. That shows you how big the water is. Look how calm it was. It, so we're like, okay, looked at the forecast. Winds were at about 10 miles an hour. That was about 10 miles an hour that morning. So we're like, okay, so we'll we'll take off from there. All right. Now, if you look at you see the pier out there and you see the little light beacon sticking up, that is the northernmost light beacon. There's another one that we showed earlier, the red tower on the opposite side of the channel, thus the left and right side, the north and south side of the channel. Oh, okay. Leading into Pentwater Lake. So the goal is to paddle out, go around this light, and up the channel into town. Okay. Okay. And now you can go back to the other oh, set of pictures. Okay, I get it now. I got the story. So, you know, so, so check the weather before. On big water, check the weather, check the weather, check the weather, and when you're done checking the weather, check the weather again. All right. Because the winds can come up so quickly, and you can go from dead calm to roller, four, five, six foot rollers in a matter of no time. So, anyway, we started our little trip, and you see both marker lights there. We're still on in the in the main lake. Here we are. Look how flat it is. Yeah. You know, we're looking towards Wisconsin. That's back towards the beach. And yes, we have our PDFs on, always. All right. So here we are going into the channel, okay? So at the end of that marker light is a big pile of rocks. you got to get out, go past the rocks, then come around and come up right. into the channel. Was there a lot of people fishing? No. No? No. This was this was at 7 in the morning. Okay. Uh, even the charter boats weren't, weren't out yet. So. so here we are. And all of a sudden, we get into the main lake and the town, choppy. and then all of a sudden, the wind's picked up. I kind of look over at Nancy. Hey, what do you think? That's eh, not too bad. I mean, yeah, but we got to get back out of here. So we did our thing. We paddled along. Flights of geese come over. Saw a ton of waterfall on this trip. So we're paddling out there. And it's bouncing us pretty good. And, you know, that it didn't bother me at that point. So we get to the end of the lake. So you're at the opposite end of where you need to go to get out. Yep. This okay. is about two miles. There's a little causeway over, and there's a marsh on the other side. And I think we actually we actually went under. And I don't know if I took any photos or not going under. Eh, looks like I did. That's coming back out. So we decided to turn around, and I'm kind of starting to get anxious because the wind's starting to right. pick up really good. You can see here it's getting worse. And I tell her, I said, okay. I said, so this might be the last picture. There might be one or two more. Yeah. Well, you're racing a sailboat. Uh, sailboats coming into the channel so we got to get out get back around said lights yeah that's the last one so so I'm thinking okay so how am I gonna do this because as I'm getting closer and we get to the end of this thing I'm paddling the waves are going out towards Lake Michigan but it feels like the current is pulling us backwards right and I'm my shoulders getting sore and I'm 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 paddling and it's constant paddle. I'm getting up to that that end there, and all of a sudden I'm to the right side, which is the north side wall, and that's the side we got to turn around. But the wind's coming out of the south. It's a cross breeze, 
and I'm like, I got to get past those rocks. I don't want to be blown into the rocks. So I cut over hard to the left, and once we got out past that last part of the break wall, right? Yeah, there was about four foot rollers. Really? And I was in front of her, and she's like, "Are you all right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I got this." She lost sight of me. I got between two rollers, and she said, "I completely disappeared." Well, yeah, it was that deep. And as I'm paddling, I'm like, okay, I'm in the trough. I've got to turn because if not, I'm going to get swamped and possibly roll. So I dug in hard on the right side and got the boat started to turn around. And then I come back to the left side and started paddling hard. And got it. And just as I started to get the turn down, the roller come down and got me. Oof. Didn't flip me, but no, I, mean, got you. I was wet. I mean, it soaked me good. And then I paddled for my dear life. <laughs> right. In the meantime, she's behind me going, woohoo. And you know, like a bobber in the water. Oh, Lord. With the dog. So. Right. But uh, you it, know, was, it was a little hairy. Well, that's what, you know, was that the scariest uh, ever been? Was that the scariest you've been on the big water? Oh, ever? Oh, he says, ever been. Yeah. Uh, ever I, been really scared in the big water? The first time I was on the big water, I was apprehensive. And then I got to feel it. But we were in 14 and a half foot kayaks. These were our 12 and a half footers. They're wider. It's got a, like a 28-inch wide beam, where our 14-footers are like 22-ish, 20-ish. Okay. They're real narrow and long, but they, they're not. They they are tippier, but I also have a rudder on the back of that boat, so oh, I, can, okay. I can really steer that boat really well. Long story short, the bigger, the longer the boat, the narrower the boat, the bigger the water. Right. Um, we learned that from uh, Tracy. Martin. Right, yep. Right. So the next big trip on the water I took was out on Lake Huron. And we crossed one evening, went out for sunset pictures, and went to Turnip Rock and back, and actually came back in the dark across Alaskan Bay. Um, the only point I really got scared on that was a roller come in from behind me, and I didn't know it was coming. It was it was pretty flat that day, but, but a swale come in. Oh, okay. And I'm paddling, and all of a sudden my boat felt like it got pushed up, from the back and I couldn't tell what it was and all of a sudden as the wave come by the front end came up and it felt like I was going backwards into the water oh okay and then it dawned on me what it was but this time this time was probably the most apprehensive I got because I knew the potential for danger gotcha because it, it got rough it got rough quick we were out for two and a half hours and that wind changed and it changed quick and when it did, it got rough. Well, so. that's like any type, any type of weather, right? It, it, it doesn't give you any warning. Yeah, it and, just happens. And he asked about, uh, yeah, all those folders are taken on my cell phone. Yep, absolutely. And yep. and Tammy says the puzzle is proof that you're a camper kayaker. <laughs> you got to have something to do in the evenings when things kind of die down. You get a barley pop. You eat dinner. You get a barley pop. You sit down, spread, clean the table off, and put a puzzle together. There you go. It's relaxing. So, and then, like Tammy says again, red right turn, red right return. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, it just—I was worried about getting pushed into the rocks. That was my. Oh, favorite. absolutely. That was my you know, biggest fear. There's a million things that can run through your mind that can happen out on the water, mm -hmm. just like it can happen on land, right? You're but you just got to keep your calm and think before you do, you know. And remember, you've still got all your flotation devices on. I had my neoprene uh, wetsuit on. You know, I had. I just. Right. I just didn't want to get in the water. He didn't want to be that guy. No. And the strange thing was, by the time we come back out, it was nine nine thirty. People were out on the causeways walking, and everybody's looking. You know, because here come these two kayakers out, and we're paddling towards Lake Michigan, and there's rollers on the water. Right. You know, and she's got the dog with her. And everybody's like, "Oh, look at the dog! Look at the dog!" <laughs> yeah, that's the big talk. And then is I'm getting towards the end there. This one guy's walking by. He goes, hey, how's it going? I said, I'll be better when I'm on that side of the pier. And he said, well, just be safe. And I go, that's the plan. Exactly, so, exactly. That will be the plan. I well, tell you what, it'll, it'll be, well, when you're heading out again. For kayaking or yeah, camping? either one. Probably both. It'll be both. And that'll be uh, two weeks from this weekend. All right, cool. Yeah. We're going to, uh, uh, well, we're going to go to Hef State Park, which is up near Rogers City. For those of you who don't know, it's up here. Right. My Michigan map here. I'm pointing at my hand. Uh, and we're going to go to Akiak 
falls yeah. and river and lake and maybe okay. wind up in Lake Huron. Nice. So Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yep. You're going to have a busy few weeks then. Yes. This weekend is well, the this, trade show. The trade show, and we're going to go do some fishing. Some charter fishing. Yep. And then we got tack. And we got tack, and then I'm going camping. Yep. And then summer's half over. <laughs> Welcome. Then, then we'll be into July. Uh, Mark, so 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 you wear glasses. How do you keep them on, and how do you keep them, the water off of them? I don't wear these are for reading, actually. I don't, I don't wear these. I just wear these in here, for computer and for the phone, so I can't see anything up close, Mark. He, um, he he wears them to see me better. But I do wear sunglasses, and they're real tight fitting. And if it gets to where I think they're gonna, it's gonna get too rough, I will actually take them off and put them in my cubby. Oh, okay. On the boat. Don't so. need those going because you won't get them back. Yeah, good thing you're not a bird in those rollers, man. I tell you what, uh, and Tom Genzel, you know, he he's uh, he's familiar with the Flint River. He, yep, he does some uh, recreating on the water. Uh, got to respect the water, man. It's just you got to respect Mother Nature. Dress for the water temps, not the air temperature. I mean, we were a little warm, but the the, the difference between the two uh, w- was pretty big. You know, know know the area you're going to. Scout it out. Don't just go, oh, hey, this looks cool. Look on a map. I can put it in here and take out there. Do your research, you know. Well, um, especially if you got to, like you said, the one stretch you got to put in to be in that area. Yeah. You got to know that. Yeah, and the fines are pretty hefty. If you don't have a permit, and they said the DNR will stop you on the water. Really? Yeah, they will I'm, stop I'm you. I'm sure they will. And ask, you know, and check and make sure that you, you got your permit to be on that stretch of the river. Wow. So, yeah. cool, cool deal, man. It's it's just summer starting and we're getting busy. Pack food with you. Pack water. Don't take alcohol on the river because if you're if you're kayaking or canoeing, you need water. You need water if you're on a long trip. You know. Well, you gotta stay hydrated. Whether exactly. you're whether you're kayaking or you're out hiking or you're out mushrooming. Um, you gotta hunting, keep your wits about you. You gotta keep your wits. One one worse thing than ever is doing that. Having some, you know alcohol with you and getting a little bit lit yep and then getting disorientated and yeah. it, it could go bad you get your shine on and all of a sudden you're you're not shining so right They're, they'll be uh, trying to recover you yep so you know have a float plan let people know where you're putting in when you're where you're taking out just just let like hunting them, yep let them know when you're supposed to be off the water uh when we do big water we do that you know, especially on big water. You know, and that goes for you, Mark Coleman. Uh, next time you're out shrooming, you just let us know where you're at, so in case we don't hear from you, we'll we'll, we'll come find you. Right. <laughs> uh, it's all for safety, Mark. Yeah, that's right. So, but I'll tell you what. Uh, let's take our last break here, yeah, and we'll wrap it. up the show. So, we'll step outside, take the last break. We'll be right back after this. All right, folks. This is it. You know, last break. I've I've really uh, in the last couple of years I've. I've really come to have a new appreciation for, for water because um, things can go wrong real fast. I've already seen uh, a half dozen accidents or incidents where people either got hurt or lost their lives this year, and it, it happens so quick. And one of them is Turnip Rock here in Michigan out on Lake Huron up in the Thumb area. People will venture out on that. Uh, there, there was three kayakers that were rescued about a month ago. Yeah. They took off and had no business being out, and they were in 10-foot boats in the Great Lakes, and they couldn't get back. They got they got disoriented, and away they went. They Oof. had to be rescued. Ouch. And they're not going to bring back your gear when they no. rescue you. You know, they just let the boats float away. So, all right, here we all go. Right. Three, two, and one. All right, last segment of the show. Uh, uh, give a shout out. Uh, I saw Kevin Craven on. Uh, he was on the show last week, just in the chat box. Okay. Uh, also happening uh, Saturday is Sturgeon Fest up in Fort Gratiot. At, at, I think it's at the Lighthouse. Uh, he's going to be up there. So if anybody is in the area and you want to go to Sturgeon Fest, uh, get over there. Look for Kevin Craven or Kevin Craven and get your picture with him. There you go. He always takes pictures of people, doesn't he? He does. It's always good to have uh, a picture with him. Yeah. Oh, who's a better kayaker, Mike Adams or Nancy? She is by far. By far. She's got more experience at it. She's been on bigger water. She has 
actually kayak from Mackinac City to St. Ignace. That's five miles across Straits of Mackinac at the Mackinac Bridge. And that can be tedious at times. Yeah, she said that was hairy. Uh, they, and she did that three three years ago, I think. So, uh, yeah, and I would like to do that, but it's going to be when conditions are impeccable. I, I, that's something that I want to do, but I'm not going to risk it. Well, that's like, you know, matter of fact, you brought that up when we were coming home. Um, as we were heading southbound, the right side, of the bridge, just you know, before you got mm -hmm. into the air, was perfectly calm. Yep. On the left side was rollers yep. coming in, right? Because yeah. the wind was blowing right down the straits. No, oh, blowing right down the the, the the fetch of the water. Yep. So wow. yeah, imagine trying to kayak there, right? I can. No, wind's got to be right or no wind. Um, you just you got you got to know the conditions, man, and they can change so quick, so quick. So, you know, five miles. That's about a two and a half hour paddle. You know, you and know. that water's moving, so yeah, it's it depending on where you put in to start your yeah coming across, it's not a straight shot. And yeah, if there's any wind at all, I want it at my back pushing me. Right. <laughs> I don't want. It. Good luck with that. So get well, a north wind, or I guess you'd have a southerly wind would be good too. It depends on where you start, right? So no, no doubt about it. Um, but no, I like I, the rivers, man. I mean, I like the big water. The big water's cool. Been in Saginaw Bay. Uh, you know, when the conditions are right, it, it's a lot of fun. You know, uh, big water is, is definitely different. Uh, you see some cool stuff, but uh, I, I like I like the really pristine rivers, like the 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 wilderness of the rivers. You know, no houses, well, nothing the, around you, for and, ten, twelve miles. And plus, you get to s you kind of float through nature. Exactly. Like you said, you know, like you you, you saw a bald eagle. Yeah. You saw a woodpecker. Mm -hmm. You see other things that you see deer all the time. We see mink. We see and haven't seen an otter yet. You see turtles and all kinds of birds. Right, and and you're, like you're just floating by, so you're not really interrupting them. No, but you're watching them as you do. And yeah. then, like you said, you get pictures, really good pictures, and you know, you, you, on the big water, yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of water. <laughs> right, <laughs> a lot of water. Right, so. But no, other than that, it's it's you know, I guess it's the official kickoff of summer, and um, we got some things coming up. I think it's going to be some fun. Well, you mentioned tech. You ready for tech? Am I ready for tech? I am ninety now now seventy five percent ready for tech. I just gotta shoot my long distance and put my tape on. No, Mark Kilmer, I've never seen snakes on the river. Although there are. You've never seen a snake on the river? No, not since we've been kayaking. I have not. Really? Nope. Not yet. It's kind of freaky. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I've seen snakes in water before. That doesn't bother me. But no, because think, I have up on the Michigami, and they're coming straight for you, and you're like, wait a minute. Take that. I'm the only land that, that you think you have. Yeah. It ain't right. happening. Well, the paddle's going to come to a smack down on them. All right. So, no, I get it. Uh, yeah, it kind of gets hairy. If you see that head coming at you, mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. You no, know, back to tack, though. I need to... I need to I need to shoot. I need to really up my shooting this week. Yep, that's my plan for this coming week. Um, in between what we got to do, uh, I just got to shoot my long distance, put my tape on, and then just shoot some. Shoot, shoot, shoot and shoot and shoot. Right. How many arrows you taking? <laughs> yes. Well, that's been the big question. That's been the big question on the TAC page well, for the last three months. Right. And it's still ongoing. People... Like they're shooting seven springs. They shot seven springs last weekend. That la no, yeah, last weekend because they're off this weekend. Uh, what bows we're shooting at Tech? Uh, our new ones. We are shooting our new ones. Absolutely. The, the new uh, Evo XFs. X F XF X. Thirty-two inch axle axle yes. with the new ECS cam, which is a entirely different cam. It is. You it's know, a, it's a tough cam. It the the rollover is, is more aggressive than the, the first ECS cam. Oh yeah, it that is. We shot uh, still ninety percent let off, so easy to hold. Uh, you know, I've shot the bow, eh, probably 100, 200 arrows, and yeah, it's I like it. It's nice. It's a flat shoe, that's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, we both increased our speed. I know I increased mine fourteen. Uh, we're shooting the same setup. Yeah, we're shooting. Yeah, we, really, we are shooting the same setup. I actually dropped my 
uh, my draw length down a quarter inch. I'm, I'm shooting a, a flat 27 now. Yep, that's what we both shoot. And uh, uh, probably taking two dozen arrows. I think it's in the box. You're taking that many? Oh, it doesn't mean I'm going to take them with me out on the field. But I, I got a box. I got a yeah, arrow box. Pounds, Mark. Arrow box and what's ever in there. Okay. Yeah, I've got 18 ready to go, but I, I don't know what I'll take with me. Right, exactly. And then when we get there, we'll hit the we'll hit the we'll hit the course practice range, get some uh, time in there just to get acclimated to the new mountain. Yeah, uh, Crystal Mountain is is new for this year. I don't know if it's a one and done. I'm not sure how they're going to do that. Obviously, stay tuned. Uh, but because of the construction back over at Boyne. Mm -hmm. um, they're not they're not able to shoot, so we're at Crystal, and then if it's one and done, we'll be back at Boeing. But check out the new digs and see how this works. Yeah, you know, and, and next year I'd almost like to go somewhere and shoot. Right, Tennessee, Vermont, Vermont looked amazing. They, you know what? They all look amazing in their own in their own. Yeah, the one out in uh, Utah, Utah Snowbird, Snowbird looks yeah. incredible. That'd be a trip. That'd be a great trip to go on. That'd be a, a yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, but you know, we got PA here. We can make it in a drive. Uh, Vermont's not that Tennessee. If Tennessee, you're there, yeah. Uh, I know there's a Those couple. Double. Yep, exactly. So, but uh, yeah, you got to get out there and do it. We always seem to do the Michigan one. Uh, we always we always have a good time. We meet lots of people. We see lots of people that we've we've known before. So. Mm -hmm. We'll get back out there. I'm sure we'll be able to have a reception to do some live shots. Let's hope. Right? And then uh, um, the, my sight tape, I had to order some more because I had the wrong ones. I still can't find what I did with my ones from last year. Okay. So they, they finally came in, and I got a light kit, too. Okay. Well, Sunday, yeah. if the weather holds, we're going to be fishing. Yes. Sunday, it, I think the weather looks okay. Uh, we're going to be heading out into Saginaw Bay with Captain Scott. Uh, he's been on the show. Uh, Up North Journal is taking a little fishing trip. Now, is there cell reception out there? Do you know? Oh, yeah. Okay, so we could go live oh. out there. Okay, I'm good. I'm sure we'll be able to go live. Yeah, the only thing I saw, was there, is, there is a chance for some rain Sunday. Yep. So mm -hmm. if, it's not, if it's not bad weather, we'll be fine. But mm -hmm. if it's the hit and miss stuff, we can jog it. Yep. And... Uh, it sounds like he's doing pretty good out there. So he was down uh, in Illinois doing some food plotting. He came back today, and so we'll see him on Sunday. Sounds good. And then we'll have a report for you next time we're on the air, right? Well, speaking of, as we wrap the show up, next week it's going to be more than likely we'll have a show, but there's a slight chance we won't because of my work schedule. Once away is getting in the way of things. So if we... Have a show next week. We're going to be talking about tack again, and we'll be talking about our fishing trip. So that's what we got on the books for this week. We don't want to book anybody to talk to because if we can't have a show, it, it just I don't want to mess with that. Right, so. exactly. And we got some things we're going to be this weekend. We're going to be at the trade show. We're going to have uh, hopefully our fishing trip to talk about next week, and then the weekend after that we'll be up at tack. So next two yeah. weeks you'll hear about our weekends of being out there mark coleman is coming up from indiana this weekend he's going to be live with us um deer camp is looking forward to meeting you uh, i talked to uh, them adam Wynn will be with us adam Wynn. we're gonna have the whole crew together uh so Tim if you're be with us yep so if you're with in new baltimore stop at the new baltimore trade center for the outdoor show it's the first one i cannot tell you what to expect uh deer camp same way we don't know what we're going into. I know there's a couple other vendors there. Island Armory, Deer Camp, uh, Buck Bates, obviously, will we'll, we'll be there. Uh, Uncle Henry's will be there. Uh, and I know, I think Cabela's is going to be there as well. And what other vendors they got for sports. I'm okay. pretty sure they're going to have their fishing people out there. Autographs, come and get them. Yep, Danny, I'll have 8x10 glossies with them. <laughs> don't shake your head at me. You know it's true. We're all waiting to get the Mark Coleman autograph. What are you going to have him sign? Stay tuned. Don't even go there. Don't even go. Oh. You're starting to scare me, man. <laughs> it wasn't my idea. <laughs> okay. That's even worse. Mark, was, we're going to have to have a talk. Right? It was, it, was a, it was an idea given to me today. All right. 
So we'll make sure we have our sil silver Sharpies. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so if you guys are out and about, come, like I said, come by and see us. Otherwise, we'll talk to you all hopefully next week. Uh, for some reason, we're not on next week. We'll be back again right after tag. And we'll let you know if we're going to be on or not. We'll do a live drop back. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you know. So anything else? Nope, that's it. Uh, let's have a good rest of our week. Get into the weekend and have some fun. Well, there you go. So next week we'll be back. Same time, same channel right here on Facebook. Y'all take care, and we'll see you all then.